Whoa, 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 pause. Hold the music. Stop. Okay. We have an apology to make. It appears that in their excitement for this episode, our now former production team, in fact, forgot to connect the podcast mics for this recording. As a result, whilst we still thankfully have some form of audio for this podcast, it is in fact what's been picked up by the camera mic, not the podcast mic. Now, this means the sound quality for this episode is far below our usual standard, so I sincerely apologize for this. I can confirm, however, our, as we mentioned, former production team have been fired for this mistake, all right, because we do not work with amateurs. It is, in fact, unlikely that we'll hear from them ever again, if you catch my drift. So with all that being said, this is our first Athlete Story episode, and we have an extremely special guest for this episode. So stick around, do your best to put up with the audio quality, because I promise you, the story in this episode is worth it. Thank you for your understanding, and I can assure you that our new production team for 2023 will be all over this for future episodes. All right, roll the intro. Welcome to the Rad Lab, a podcast founded on delving deeper into topics to help you become a better athlete and a platform for athletes, coaches, and clinicians from the community to share their stories and experiences to give you an idea of how you can become the best version of yourself. My name is Liam. I'm a strength conditioning coach here at Rad, and I'm delighted to have you guys along for the ride as we share this journey towards further understanding the world of human performance. I'm here today with my co-host, Mr. Radford. Chris, how are you? Very well, thanks, Hansi. I'm excited about this one, mate. I'm looking forward to it as well. Now, as we've mentioned previously, uh, this show is not just to have some amazing coaches and clinicians sharing their knowledge with us. It's also an opportunity to hear some incredible stories from some incredible athletes. Um, With that being said, Radders, um, this is the highly anticipated inaugural athlete story in the lab. And what better guest to introduce for our first story than, I can say this now, brand new Ballarat Miners star signing, Abby Weirung. <laughs> How's that for an intro? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Abby, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good Fantastic. to be here. Awesome. Um, well, seeing as it is hot off the press, um, just announced, I'd probably like to start there with the Miners. I'm sure you're um, keen to be back in Ballarat. Talk to us about how you feel, how it all came to be. Yeah, very excited. Um, back home where it all began for me. Um, yeah, pretty much I saw Bakes, Rob Baker got the job and I thought, hmm, I wonder if I'll get a message here. <laughs> um, and yeah, sure enough, he did. And then caught up and yeah, everything worked out, which is cool. Um, it was a really hard decision leaving Benigo. Obviously, we got to the grand final um, MBO on last year. So that was really hard. I have some really strong connections there, but really excited to be home and close to family and hopefully build something with the miners. Yeah, it's super excited. Well, we're excited anyway. Very, very <laughs> excited. Um, well, let's go, we might jump into your basketball journey there. Uh, so you grew up in Coinjibora. Yeah. Hey, you know where that is? Where is that? <laughs> Between the land and Dale Ship. Yeah, so it's not far away. It's not really even a town. It's just a little area, a bit of bush. Um, there used to be a pub there, but just, oh. just some houses now. Yeah, and the the Weirung Zoo. Yes, the Weirung Zoo. How many animals are in the zoo? Oh, I was counting them the other day. Someone asked me. I think there's there's over twenty, and then I've got about twenty chooks. But I don't know if you count the chook. Do you count the chooks as pets? Um, They're pretty friendly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe forty. Yeah. Oh, so, so for those who don't know, Abby is a massive animal fan I of, of all shapes and sizes and types. Yeah. How many dogs do you have at the moment? Four dogs. About to get another foster dog. Yeah. Um, three cats. We'll go for a while. Ten horses, a goat, and all the chickens. Ten horses. That's a good collection. Yeah. Do bad. you have favourites or? Um, Reggie yeah, is Reggie's my whippet. There. And yeah, I can't. Oh, Gilbert's the favourite goat. There's only one of him. <laughs> <laughs> and the horses I can't choose. Nice. No, so, yeah, grew up in Kuinjibora. Um, do you remember when we first started playing basketball? Yeah. Um, for all my school, I went to school in Melton, my college. Mum and dad taught there. 
they had a domestic team. Yeah. Um, started when I was nine, so I played for that team for a couple of years. Were you good? No, no. really bad. I remember my first game, I dribbled the foot, the ball off my foot about eight times, and I was like, oh, this isn't good, but I loved it, <laughs> so yeah. I kept going. I kept going from there. Um, and so I suppose yeah, if we go along the pathway, so domestic basketball in Melton, then ended up in Ballarat in the <coughs> junior academies. Is that right from there? Yeah, I think I. My Dan come up here first, my um, middle brother, and then I kind of followed and got a um, training spot with the under 14s when I was bottom age. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just started squad from there and then, yeah, met, made the Central Academy program. I don't know what it's called these days, but um, yeah, that kind of started my country Vic pathway. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, played juniors with Ballarat till I was bottom age 18s and then um, headed off to Canberra. Yeah, so tell us about, so, so going to Canberra, you went to the AIS. Yeah. Um, and so you moved, so everything was that you were pretty much become a full-time athlete uh, when you were 16, 17? Yeah, just turned 16. Yeah. Um, yeah, headed up there, didn't know what I was in for, I was so nervous. Um, and I was such a shy, scared little human. Um, so it was a big shock to the system, um, like living wise, because I went from being on the farm with my two older brothers and mum to living with like five other girls in this little yeah. pod thing. And um, yeah, I I locked myself in my room and just read books in all my spare time. And was it um, yeah, was it a tough transition? Yeah, massive. Yeah, but I think it was probably the best thing for me um, as far as like growth personally um, and and basketball wise like I wouldn't trade those two years for the world because I um, could walk like 200 meters and be at the stadium which I'd never known living in Coogee and mum did so much driving yeah, yeah. to get us anyway yeah and did family come and visit a little bit when you're up there yeah mum come up a fair bit yeah. she'd get in the car and oh, gee, yeah. drive up yeah good team player yeah she was yeah Coming out of that, so obviously having that experience, those couple of years there, um, obviously you would have changed a lot as a person. As you said, you've gone in sort of you know, shy, you've obviously had to grow up super fast and everything's happening around you. Um, was it sort of after that point that you were like, actually, yeah, this is something that I can definitely see myself doing as a, as a job, like as a pro? Or what, at what age or what point were you kind of like, yeah, this is definitely something that I can really have a, a proper crack at? Yeah, it's funny because before, I had no idea I was being looked up for the AIS and before that I just moved um, from Mowbray, I went to Mowbray Prep to 9 and then I got a scholarship to go to Clarendon for year 10 and I kind of just got my head around like okay basketball is like not going to be it because I hadn't, you know, there were, there were other junior Ballarat girls that were, that were getting Oz Camp call ups and like I've made state teams but I hadn't gotten kind of any further than that and I just like started loving school, like Clarendon, I loved it there and I've just kind of been like, oh, you know, basketball might not be what it is for me and, and I, was, I was actually okay with that, um, which in hindsight is really weird, um, but yeah, like I couldn't imagine my life being any different now, but um, yeah, it was really funny, I just kind of got my head around not, potentially not like giving basketball a crack and um, got a call from Phil Brown at the AAS and he said, oh, we'd love you to come up here. And I was like, oh my God, like, sure you got the right and I cried, like, I just cried. Like, I was like, I can't leave home. Yeah, um, yeah so and I think... do you, what were you, what are you good at? Or what were you good at on the court? Oh, on the court? Um, not much. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I don't know. They obviously, they obviously saw something. Yeah, I think they saw... I, I'm really grateful that they saw the potential in me because when yeah. I went to the institute, I was by far the worst athlete there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've always been a really hard worker, and I, I obviously got like way better in those two years. Yeah. Um, just with like the S and C and being able to be on court every day. Um, but yeah, really grateful they saw the potential and took that kind of chance on me. I guess. Yeah. Um, Where does? But, sorry, to jump in again. Where does your work ethic come from, you reckon? Oh, mum and dad, for sure. Um, I was actually thinking the other day, um, 
super off topic, off topic, but like um, mum and dad got given a gold class movie voucher for Christmas one year or their, or their anniversary or something. And um, they were going to see this horse movie and we were like, us three kids were so devo that we couldn't go. And we weren't well off by any means. So mum and dad couldn't afford to just take three kids to gold class. So they said, oh, if you want to come, you better like, make some money and our way of making pocket, pocket money growing up was by selling horse food for two dollars a bag oh, like yeah. these huge bags of horse food and so we had to sell enough horse food to go to gold class buy our own tickets we got there yeah i think we set the records of horse food <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that wasn't easy like and well, yeah so and so some of the behaviors that mum and dad sort of taught you at a young age and they taught you how to yeah work hard train hard to sort of accomplish what you want to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, like, I just don't know any different. Um, and I, I just can't not work hard. Um, doesn't sit right with me. So, yeah, definitely from mum and dad. Um, <laughs> and the horse being collecting <laughs> wasn't easy. <laughs> Is it still $2 a bag? No, I don't collect it anymore, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, so I suppose we'll go back to the journey. So, yeah, so you're at the AIS. Uh, progressing through the ranks there, working super hard, um, yeah, putting time into just improving yourself. Come to the end of the time of the AIS, is that when you then transitioned and started playing WNBL with Canberra? Yeah, yeah. So I think um, <coughs> pretty much as soon as I got to the institute and I'd seen all the other girls that were kind of graduating and going into the, into the pro or pro, we didn't get paid real well when we left the institute, but um, yeah, I was kind of like, oh, like, I can do this. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, signed with, oh, there was a few Oz teams kind of in those couple of years um, at the institute, and then, yeah, went straight, signed with the Caps, Canberra for three years out of the institute. Yeah, nice. And now you're in your ninth WNBL season. I know. Which is pretty great. How many games have you played today? Um, I just notched 150 a couple of weeks ago. That's pretty impressive. That's a journey. <laughs> so, yeah, so you spent time with Canberra, Bendigo, Adelaide, and then you're back at Bendigo again. Yep. And by the way, you seven and up at the moment? We are, yeah. Seven and up. Hot. Uh, <laughs> they're in some good form. Yeah. Uh, which is exciting for the girls. Very. Yeah. Who do you play this week? Southside Friday. Big game? Yeah. Can Massive. Can we win? Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, so you played nine seasons of WNBL. What keeps driving you to keep playing at the top? Um, because I know I'm not at my potential yet. So I think there's a lot I can be better at. And um, yeah, I'm not. I haven't. I'm not anywhere near my peak. So I That's just want. Time. Yeah, I want to keep working and um, be the best that I can be. I think that's um, super relatable for at least a lot of people that we get through the doors here at Rab as well, you know, like um, some are certainly more blessed than others in terms of their, their starting point, but one thing that sort of rings true, I suppose, no matter what in anyone, if they want to get the best out of themselves, is just that, that foundation, that hard work, right? So I um, think to, to hear that from someone um, that's, you know, at the top of their game, so to speak, um, that, you know, you still want to work hard you still want to try and improve you still feel like you have more to give um yeah like that's a really important message for, for everyone whether it's in our gym or just in general um doesn't really matter whether you're starting at the very bottom or yeah you are at the top um yeah there's still work to be done that's what I love. and do, where do you want to get to uh olympics yeah. Opals, olympics yeah and we're very close aren't we um, yeah I mean, I'm in mean like the broader squad. Yeah. Um, I've made a couple. I made the Asia Cup team last year. But <laughs> do we need to turn the lights yeah. back on? <laughs> For those of you who are listening and not watching, um, <laughs> we have just had a blackout in the lab, so we might have to take a quick break. We'll be back in two seconds. It's in the pot, and the attitude goes the other way. Oh, be good, but a beautiful Weerung. move by Wingrung. Oh my! And we're back with the lights on. Um, um, now, Hazy, so Abby's very modest. She uh, is. So she, yeah, you're in the broader Opal squad, which is an unreal achievement. Um, but then I suppose that's when that work ethic kicks in of like, 
yeah, not being content with being in the squad. Mm-hmm. We want to be on the court, um, playing minutes, and yeah, going to the Olympics would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And Hans, you want to be there too. Absolutely, <laughs> courtside, pals. No more fans. <laughs> We're pretty good on the bench, actually. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. You yeah. experienced that when you, you will, will actually, yeah, the few minors games. Um, yeah, we'll be there the, in the box. The oh, rad, the rad box is next to the minors bench. Yeah, Amazing. so we get we get amongst it. It is beyond mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, jump into your career now. Now you're not very old, but you've you've been a part of some big moments. What would be some of your favourite basketball memories? <clears throat> um, I went to two World Junior Games for Australia. Um, that's the under 24, under 23, one of them, yeah. um, tournaments, uh, that was 2017, 2019, we won gold at both of them, yeah, that's pretty cool. um, played in front of 18,000 in the 2017 um, yeah. semi-final, because we played Chinese Taipei in the semi, and that, we that's were playing right. in Taiwan, yeah, gotcha. mm-hmm. that would be not you could not hear a single thing, but it was, yeah, just, Aren't uh, like beyond anything, like amazing. Yeah, were you at either of those events with your family and would you get there and watch? Yeah, mum, yeah, mum, mum and they didn't miss um, any. Yeah, who was the better cheerer? Mum, for sure. Mum, yeah, her heart <laughs> was, um, yeah, out of this world. <laughs> she was pretty passionate about it all. Yeah, super, super, yeah. super big fan. Yeah. Um, if it's okay, I'll give you a little bit of context as well. Um, Mum's not with us anymore, um, which would be really tough. Um, but I suppose pretty cool that she's yeah watching over and being able to see what she's instilled in you from like a work ethic, um, determination. I know family's always been massive to you. I don't know that's a big reason why coming to my life, be close with the family and your little niece. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. What's her name? Bonnie. Bonnie. Yeah. How old is Bonnie? Uh, nearly three months. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And really. is she starting to like smile and interact with her and everything? Yeah, she's smiling now. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And so we go from so if I go back to some good times in basketball, so we played in the the uni games, gold medal games. Yeah. Um, has there been a game? I've had a few of these, Hansy. Yes. Where you're just on. Yeah. I've had it a few times. <laughs> oh, I could imagine. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it, Radis. But let's ask someone who has been on before. Is it? Yeah, is there any time where you were just like the hot hand? Yeah, that semi final in front of the eighteen thousand. I didn't miss a shot. You were on. That was I, unbelievable. I think I had one turnover and I played nearly the whole game. Um, much. Yeah, that was probably. How many points did you put up? Um, I think like nineteen or something. Yeah. yeah. Solid. So in that kind of scenario, so obviously for us mere mortals, we, you know, it's very unlikely we'll get the <laughs> chance to play in front of that kind of um, crowd and, and put on a performance like that. Thinking back to that, was that something, obviously you said like there's screaming fans, you can hardly hear yourself think. Is that where it almost sort of, I hear a lot of people say it sort of almost comes back to like an instinct thing, like you just sort of, you have the ball in your hand, something like that. You know, it's sort of something that you've been working towards your whole life. Um, yeah. What, what was going through your mind, I suppose, each time you, you on the ball? Was it something that you're just like, I've, I've been put here to do this right now and, and that's how it's going to be? Or, yeah, what was going through your head? Yeah, I think um, I'm pretty good at, like, blocking out the noise. So, like, when I have the ball or if I'm in the play, I don't necessarily hear it. It's when you stop and, like, you're in a timeout or you're trying to communicate with your teammate or something. Like, that's when I was like, holy shit, this is really loud. Yeah. But... You know, when I'm actually playing, it I don't really hear anything. Like, we had a game a couple of weeks ago, and the fans were, like, being pretty wild. And after the game, I was like, oh, well, I had no idea. I didn't yeah. hear any of it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I've always been pretty good at just kind of focusing on what's happening, and and somehow I don't hear the rest of it. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that's really, really cool. Um, one, one other thing, yeah, yeah similar for me, hates is rubbing new experiences soon, hopefully. Uh, pressure. I thrive under pressure. And so I want the ball of my hands in the, the <laughs> last few minutes, the last few seconds. Are you similar? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you'd be crazy not to. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you also have to not be an idiot. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, and basketball team game, 
yeah, yeah. Mm. Whoever's on is on, and you get the ball to them, and um, you have to know your role, and yeah, like the Bendigo team at the moment, we have like eight people who could go off on any night, which yeah. is That's the cool. dream. Yeah. 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 Um, so. I'm a big yeah. fan of Alicia Frolings. Um, standing flex. You've got a big, uh, big gun show flex on yeah. the bench. Yeah. Big fan of that yeah. image at the moment. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you watching on YouTube, um, that will be coming up on the screen. Yes. Now. <laughs> um, well, let's go. We might sort of yeah, jump or some, some lessons, I suppose, Hansi. We might yeah. go to lessons. So, as sort of Hansi touched on before, so we're sort of at RAD and just across the basketball community and whatnot. Um, lots of young kids coming through. Um, is there anything that a younger you, a message you'll have to pass to them, or, or even just yeah, younger athletes in general that um, you've learned along the way, which has helped you to, to get where you, where you are, I suppose. Yeah, I think um, my biggest challenge, and probably still is, is the self-doubt. Yep. Um, like, I just wish growing up, I believed in myself a bit more, and um, yeah, just kind of had the guts to like back yourself. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I think that's, um, I think some of that's just your modesty though. Like you're not a um, look at me, look how good I am type of person. And so I wouldn't, I can see how sometimes it can be a negative, but I also think that's what makes you, you at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah, pros and cons are that I can see. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, <Jads. laughs> um, But yeah, no, I just, yeah, I mean, I just think you have to just enjoy it and uh, not put so much pressure on yourself and you know just believe believe in yourself and yeah just give it a crap I think it's like I think a lot of kids these days get so focused on you know trying to be like Steph Curry or that or they're like so focused on being an NBA player or something that they don't really like just enjoy the journey and kind of just have fun along the way. Um, Good, particularly because that's, well, that's why you, you play, is the mm. fun side of things, so yeah, make sure you don't lose sign of that yeah, uh, along the way. Um, and is there, as you progressed along the ranks, I suppose, have you, because um, there's more to basketball than just basketball, dribble and shoot, um, what are some things that have been yeah, super beneficial to you, once again, getting to where you are and maintaining your level, I suppose? Um, definitely the S and Z. <laughs> Big shout out to Rad Center. <laughs> um, nice. But no, nah, I, <laughs> I when I went to the institute, obviously, I just turned sixteen. I think I'd done like four sessions in the gym prior to going there. So um, I really noticed a difference in my game when I got a bit stronger. Yeah. Um, I was pretty light and you know got pushed around a bit. Um, so yeah, I think that really elevated my game, um, and I like noticeably got a lot stronger. Um, and for context, Abby is very strong now too. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So and I think like I've maintained that pretty well. Love being in the gym, um, and yeah, it just you just can keep yourself so much better on the court if you're consistently in the gym. Yeah, because that's the other side. Other side has been. Well, you've been able to play, like I said, nine WNBL seasons, 150 games. Um, you don't do that without looking after your body um, to be able to get, keep performing at that top level. So credit to you for putting time into you so you can keep doing your craft. Um, so I think that's another good lesson for like, the, the young kids and whatnot. Like, yeah, you've got to you know, invest in yourself and put more time into yourself um, to yeah, elevate yeah, across the board, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I've had my a few niggle, niggles here and there across a few seasons but for the most part touch wood I've like remained pretty pretty healthy yeah yeah cool fantastic um well rather unless there's anything else you'd like to touch on do you have any questions that you said you were going to host us at one stage yeah what's next for the rad lap oh what do you got in store <laughs> that's a whole episode in itself yeah 2023 <laughs> i um yeah this is I can confirm um, it's going to be a very big year for 2023 where there, there are some things in, in the works and some things in the, in the water, but um, look, I, I can't speak on it 
too much until it happens out of you. But Don't want to give too much just away. Just know, two, two words, um, if I had to sum it up, world domination. So, wow. Yeah, you'll just have to wait. No, Heard it here first. The, the big thing is we just want to keep, um, it's another, yeah, content creation platform um, and just helping. The big thing that Rad overall is just yeah, in that education space. Um, so if this can, as an example, this episode, if this can help a, a junior basketballer uh, learn some, some key things, um, and that's a win for us. Um, if Hainsy can learn, you know, how to get that hot hand to one, one day and beyond. Oh, you, oh, no, you've already got it. Yeah, yeah. no, I've already got yeah. it. I'll, I'll give you some tips later. Um, that's a big thing. If we can, um, yeah, have as many little impacts along the way, that's um, that's what we're chasing with it, I suppose. Absolutely. But, hey, so you've got some big questions to finish with. Yeah, um, probably the, again, as we know, the most important segment of the Rad Lab um, is the couch review. Mm. Now, um, Abby, you've been a, a, I would say a long time listener, however, this is being the third episode, let's just say a, a devoted listener so <laughs> far um, to the lab. So you are familiar with the couch, um, but obviously this is your first time sitting in it. Um, let's have a review. So we're gonna break it down for starters. Let's talk about ergonomics. So how are you sitting right now? How's it feeling? Very comfortable, mm -hmm. yeah, not, okay. not bad. Good, um, talk to me about the material. Um, so is it that kind of material something that you like? Yeah, it's quite soft, mm -hmm. but yeah, very comfy. Good, and in mm -hmm. terms of cushion, are you a firm couch person like I'm sitting on right now, or are you more of the, the soft plush sort of couch person? Yeah, I think the plush. Yeah, okay, that plays well into this then. Um, <laughs> to sum it all up then, an overall review out of 10 uh, for the experience you've had on the couch today, what would it be? Ooh, I reckon an 8.5. 8.5, yeah. Original. That's solid. I yep. was very excited to sit on the couch after <laughs> the last couch review. I was very intrigued. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, well, yeah, we've loved having you on the couch, Abby. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for your time today. Um, it's been a pleasure. Radders, thank you for your time as well. No um, And thanks to all you guys out there for coming along uh, to hear this incredible story. Um, yeah. It's been a, a wonderful thing to have um, as the inaugural story on the lab. Um, but that being said, we've got heaps more lined up for you guys. Um, we've got some more awesome guests on the way, more awesome content. Um, but for today, that is all we have. So we'll see you back in the lab for the next episode very soon.